and we're going into our second uh, second panel and allow me invite um, Innocent Kawoya as the CEO of High People and co-founder. Please hand clap. We have got uh, Ronald Dazere, who is already at the panel, and uh, Peter Kakoma, CEO, Kanzu Court, and uh, John Baptist Ocheng, team leader, Craft Silicon. Please take up the seat as we proceed. Yes, you know financial service providers, for them to very well trans, uh, be, tra be transparent in their services, there needs to be at least a software or softwares involved. And in this panel, we look at how uh, uh, the state, we look at how SAFE is open source software for financial services. And with me, Rita Cabanero. Ladies and gentlemen, before you, like I, I introduced to them earlier, we now will begin with the, um, the Kanzu code right here. You'll tell us what is the open source concept. Is it related to uh, the open APIs? Thank you very much, Rita. So the, the open source concept is generally, at the heart of it, is saying that when a, a piece of software is built, whatever that software is, whether it's a, a, a website or a platform, um, that the, the, the inner working, workings of that software are available to anyone else who might want to use it. So the code behind that, what used to be referred to as the source code, that was used to build that software is available for anyone else who might want to use it. So think of it like if you went to a restaurant and you had a nice meal mm -hmm. and you enjoyed it, you also have access to the, 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 the recipe, the detailed recipe from the, the, the chef on how that software was built so that you can also do that, um, pretty much rework that, that uh, build that same thing yourself. So. You have access to the, 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 okay. the code. Okay, thank you so much. Innocent Kawoya is the CEO of High People. How does open source work? Uh, thank you, Rita. Um, open source has lived around us for so many times and so many years. I'm sure uh, so many developers, uh, so many implementers of solutions have uh, heard of uh, uh, solutions like Ubuntu, like Putty, like Apache. And MySQL that I'm sure every financial service provider uses at the back end of developing financial solutions. And of course, uh, the web, typically as long as someone is running a dynamic website, uh, maybe in more than 95% of all the dynamic websites are leveraged open source like uh, MySQL. It is um, uh, solutions that uh, come with a lot of democracy, a lot of uh, transparency, and uh, they give an open room for everyone to innovate and make sure we make the world better with technology. Very, thank you very much. Uh, John Baptist Ochen, are people's funds safe with the open source? What do you think? My take about that is uh, I think any, any code with a open source or closed source is, is, a, is not a, is, is secure. Mm -hmm. So the question is how secure is the, the, is the code? Mm -hmm. So you might find that uh, most financial institutions have, uh, have contracts with fintechs, but that contract does not guarantee security for the platform. So the question is how secure is the open source software that you're using? Okay. Yes, yeah, so the, the, what companies should do is uh, personally review security of these open source softwares and they can be as secure as the, the Very, closest. very well. Thank you. And now we have got the open source software Modulop. Ronald, as they were, share with us how can Modulop, the open source, help markets like Uganda? Uh, thank you. Let me start off with a bit of an anecdote. If you're in this room and you're over 30, I guarantee at some point you owned a Nokia phone. Sure. Conversely, if you're in this room and you're over 30, in the last 12 years, I don't think your main phone has been a Nokia. It's not. I guarantee you that. You probably have owned it either for legacy reasons or nostalgia, but it's not your main phone. And why is that? 
a study was done to understand why Nokia fell uh, as a leading um, phone manufacturer. And it was actually discovered that Nokia still makes some of the best telephones as, as far as the hardware is concerned. The problem is they had a proprietary operating system called Symbian, which no one could develop for. So you had very good phones running an operating system that only Nokia could develop for. You couldn't go and develop an app to run on a Nokia phone. And so the wisdom of people like Google was to say, let's have an open source um, operating system that runs on phones that anyone can develop for. And the wisdom in that was to suggest that the team at Google or whoever owns, um, perhaps let's even take an example of, of Nokia, whoever owns that software, the proprietary software, can never develop quick enough or fast enough to the level that the entire world can develop. Because now we've... Very, very well. So the way you... Got the, the, and, and to answer your question directly now, to, uh, when we have open source, firstly, of course, it fosters uniformity. It means all of us are going to largely... Um, run off the same thing. I could hire a developer tomorrow and he will come and slot in um, on what something else was doing yesterday because they all understand the platform. But more than that, it allows many people now to cleverly contribute to that software and to do apps and to, to, to innovate and, because the platform is there. So what Mojalo or people like that and, and open source will then do is to, it gives you the platform on which to dream. It, it's a blank canvas in which you dream and do anything. So it fosters innovation, it fosters uniformity, the ability for me to change tomorrow to go and pull another developer who's been using that operating system, rather that um, uh, open source software somewhere, and bring him into my operations, and there will hardly be any learning time. He'll just slot in and continue working. Of course, also, it's free. So it's a bit cheaper than if you had to go and buy proprietary uh, software. Oh. So the benefits are immense. All right, thank you so much. We have also seen the transitions from Nokia to now we have very many Samsung and very many on board, of course. Let's begin with uh, Peter. We see now the transitions in the country. Is Uganda ready for the open source software? Well, um, more than just soft open source software, is Uganda ready for software generally or technology generally? I, I think... Open source is probably just a subset of that. You could please get closer to the microphone, please. Sorry, thank you. So I think um, as the, as, uh, the keynote ca captured, there, there have been a number of challenges in getting people to transition, but uh, we've started to transition more and more, and the pandemic has actually forced us to jump even faster into things we are taking our, our time getting into. Open source is just a sub-component of that. It has several advantages. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're definitely ready for it. And we, because of the cost of building from scratch, it's one of the things we're inadvertently going to have to take up and start to use. Because as we start to run after technology, we don't necessarily have the benefit of building from scratch, because that costs a lot. So it, whether we are ready or not, it's one of the things we are going to have to adopt a lot more of, given where we are as an economy, given where, where we are as a, an ecosystem. It's something that we, we are going to have to use a lot more of. Um, okay. That's, that's how it's okay. Going. Innocent, please share with us your take on if Uganda is ready for the open source. Well, Uganda has been ready and has been using open source. Like Ronald noted, we, we didn't adapt Nokia phones because we preferred something that we can easily use. The same way you see an iPhone only keeping as a prestigious device, mm -hmm. uh, but the others that allow you to plug in, have the same chargers, do everything in a very shared environment are still adapted to by Ugandans and Africans in general. So in, in brief, Uganda has been ready for open source for a, a number of years, maybe more than 20 years. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Ronald, please. What is your take on that? Uh, there's a common saying, ready or not, here I come. So I think <laughs> whether we are ready or not, it's a way to go. Open source is a way to go. But I think uh, to agree with my colleague, um, I think we've been ready a while. And with higher levels now of, um, of literacy, and a lot of interest in computing, and of course the prices of, of open source being so low, 
I think Uganda has been ready a while and we are, we, we are good to go. Okay, thank you so much. Please, uh, John Baptist, share with us your take on that. I think we are ready as Uganda. So the big question here is how we can strategically use open source to deliver product to the financial uh, market. So you find, uh, for example, when uh, banks right now can maybe your core banking system, you, you, you are not allowed to host it in, a, in an, an open source software. Mm -hmm. So if we have financial institution mm -hmm. adopting this open source um, software and contributing to it, you will find that other, other brands will embrace it and it can really, really push uh, deliver of, of financial institutions to, to in the country. Okay, as uh, someone from the audience prepares to come, maybe if there is any question, uh, let's proceed with, uh, with Innocent there. He, John Baptist brought something that how, the question is how strategically can we adopt the open source? What do you think? Um, uh, strategically, uh, you, as you may see, um, and I'm personally very thankful to the pioneers in financial technology like Pegasus, Your Uganda, uh, Craft Silicon, uh, for actually, and all the participants of the 40 Days 40 Fintechs. Uh, such events are meant to get us even more ready for adapting uh, tools, uh, emerging technologies like open source software, like Mojalo, and many others that are going to come. Mm -hmm. uh, it is our role to make sure that when there are many of these that are emerging and are helpful, after having very good assessment of the stakeholders, we make sure everyone gets to have a share of them and make use of them as much as we can. Of course, one of the things I'm sure it is being done at Pegasus, a lot of training is done, but we're also collaboratively going to create a, a, an environment that allows every interested developer, every interested person in making sure we create a, a solutions of open source, trained free of charge, so that there is nothing like someone saying we don't have knowledge or we cannot be able to adapt. So I can take that for granted uh, from a high people point of view. All right, thank you. Peter, do you have uh, a thought about the strategic adoption of it? Yes, 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 I do. I, I feel that uh, given where we are, strategically, we should be taking advantage of a lot of the open source software that already addresses a lot of the core issues. Um, so while the early players, for example, now in the fintech space, we had a lot of the early adopters doing what we have in the aggregation space. Taking advantage of, what, of uh, something like Moja Loop allows a, a new entity to piggyback on existing software and run miles ahead. What that means is a startup in a, in a month can have software that allows it to do remittances, secure software that allows it to do remittances from Uganda to, to Canada, uh, something that took the, tradition, the, the early runners in this space years to build, and I'm sure Ronald will actually back this up. Uh, things like WordPress will allow you in five minutes to set up your own online shop and start receiving payments. So as opposed to trying to go into uh, strategically, we should be very focused on, uh, on, on doing things that are pushing communities that are already running with open source software. So uh, communities pushing WordPress, communities like what High People is doing here, pushing Moja Loop, communities that are pushing Linux as, a, as an operating system. So all communities that are being deliberate about training, about ad, uh, pushing adoption, uh, that are doing education, so mm -hmm. that more and more people right. are making use of this. Thank you so much. Ronald, you said something earlier that ready or not, Ready or not, we are ready. <laughs> Do I take it for the strategy as well? I, I think that the, the previous speaker has, has summed it up very well. Again, remember there needs to be also an incentive for people who are contributing to this open source. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a shell and everyone is adding to it. And we need to have a culture where we begin to contribute to some of these things. I don't know if there are any you can I have a friend. He contributed to the Linux um, music player called Amarok. And now when you load Amarok, his name shows up among the credits. Can we as Ugandans begin to contribute to some of these things? And when we have uh, forums like this, can we have a chance for people to come and shout out their success and say, look, on the Moja Loop uh, software, I added a functionality that does anti-money laundering, for example, or does velocity checks on, on, um, on transactions. And 
as he said, that's something that we then all adopt. We are in the same industry, we pass transactions, but is there a standard way of doing velocity checks on transactions? Mm. If you add that bit to the existing uh, software that wasn't there, can, we, can you be credited, can you be given a forum like this to come and make noise about what you've made and be recognized for it? Again, because it's open source and free, of course there will be no pecuniary reward in terms of finances, but at least the ability for you to be recognized for the achievement you've done uh, and adding a brick to the layer of knowledge in, 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 in the software. Right. So I think that's important. All right, thank you so much. And now we have got a question from the audience. You can step over, please and you direct it to whom you want it to go. Your name first. Uh, my name is Jonathan Kamoga from the East African newspaper. Uh, the, my questions could go to all of you or any of you can answer them. Uh, asking from a layman's perspective, I would like to understand what is uh, open source software. Um, then, um, where in Africa is it working, um, with examples maybe. And what would be the cost of implementing open source software in a market like Uganda? Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I will direct the question to Innocent Kawoya, the CEO of High People, since they are the inventors of a module of the open source in the country. Oh, we are not the inventors. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. We, are, no, we are partners. To the, the partners. Thank and, uh, you. Thank you. We are advent supporters of open source. Okay. Thank I'll, you. I'll explain open source in a very layman uh, language. Open source uh, is a supermarket that allows everyone to have a store, sell whatever they want, the way they want it, and make sure they make it look better every single day. I would say it in a, a layman's language. I would uh, maybe ask uh, Ronald to speak about where it is in Africa, and maybe, uh, maybe uh, my other colleagues can speak about the rest. Yeah. Okay, I think the commonest form really of um, open source is uh, Linux. South Africa, for example, has its own distribution of Linux called Ubuntu, which was born out of universities. And this was open source that was put on university computers for everyone to play with. And many other people added onto it and became a very rich brand of Linux. So that, for me, is the commonest bit. Someone already spoke about uh, MySQL. I don't know if MySQL really is open source. I know it's free software, but I don't think you can go in and change the functionality. Uh, for example, how it indexes or how it... I, I, I'm not too sure it would qualify as open source. But ideally, open source is something you can download and enhance. The same way all of these telephone companies, for example, pick uh, Android OS and each of them does something clever with it. It remains Android, but every phone, whether it's a Techno or it's a, a Samsung, or it's, they all take the very same source code, which is um, Android iOS, and play around with it, and then come up with their own operating system that runs on your phone. So for me, those are the commonest forms uh, of uh, open source. On, for telephones, Android, for, for computers, uh, Linux. All right, thank you. Peter, what do you think? I'll, I'll add just another example. So he, you, you asked about what does it cost. Open source is free. Really, every time you're using any app on your phone, either that app, the code that built, because all, all apps come from code, either the code that built that app is available publicly on the internet or it's not. So the moment it's available publicly on the internet, it is open source. So that, that's, that's literally what it means. So uh, what Ronald pointed out is um, when you're using your Android phone, just know that the code that built Android, uh, the Android operating system is available publicly. And what these big companies do is they get it and modify it before making it available on your phone. Every time you use Firefox as a browser, that is open source software. If you've heard of WordPress, that is an open source uh, tool. So it's already available, it's free, what changes is when you asked about um, how, how much does it cost, it's free, but then people get it and adopt it and make it available to you commercially in different ways. Mm -hmm. So a local startup here selling websites can start to use WordPress because it's free, but then make a, a, a website available to you for I don't know how much at a, a subsidized cost. But to build it for you, they are not building it from zero. They are getting open source software and modifying it for your needs. 
Thank I you so much. Adults. Thank you. Let's cross to John Baptist. Okay, just to add on what the panelists have said, uh, there is also a lot of open source software on uh, software as a service platforms. So this is software that you, you do not install on your, on your computer, but you can access it uh, over the internet and you can also contribute to it. Thank you so much. We have got another question from the audience. Please come on. Hello everyone. Hello. I'm Onalo, it's my name. I'm a software engineer by profession. Now, my first question comes, uh, I'll summarize it. It talks about uh, open source, but we have known that open source software usually come with challenges of security, even with Windows, Linux, Ubuntu, everything. What assurance are you giving us that it's going to be secure? The other part is the compatibility part. We're building different platforms. You have Android, you have uh, Ubuntu, you have uh, Mac OS. How, how sure are we that the software that you're building will be very compatible with the different platforms that we run? And what's the purpose of you bringing open source in Uganda? What will you gain if you're making it open for everyone? Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I think Innocent, you'll take up uh, the first question. No, thank you. Um, maybe I'll speak directly to uh, open source, uh, that is Moja Loop. Uh, uh, maybe firstly, uh, Moja Loop uh, was designed as a reference model for payment interoperability. And um, uh, as uh, Moja Loop as an open source is available for developers, uh, software engineers, uh, tech companies, governments, NGOs to either adapt but, uh, by picking only ideas and things that it does, or instructions or specifications, or pick its code, work with it, and modify it to anything customized that you want to provide as a solution, or adapt all of it, pick all of it, and use it as an entire open source to provide and develop for you an interoperable payment system. But it's typically a back-end solution that is supposed to be enabling services through a financial service provider. So in the end, as it helps us in creating and scaling the creation of interoperable payment solutions, as a developer, as a fintech, and as a, a software developer in, in any sense, you're supposed to come and look at much more, so, uh, Moja Loop in a sense of what is it able to serve and what is it not able to serve, first of all. But in the sense of its security and uh, having the confidence of the community is that unlike many other uh, open source solutions that have been developed. Moja Loop has been put in a, in a place with some guidance and support of the community that is sup supposed to be here for a long time. The community is able to critique, to analyze any adaptions and any code that is created off Moja Loop. And if something is supposed to be adapted as part of Moja Loop, it's supposed to be verified and in one sense certified. So in the end, we are sure and have confidence that there is some very good uh, trust in the solution that will be customized and developed of Moja Loop. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, Richard, share with us about the integration part of the Android. You mean me? Okay. No, please, from Pegasus. Oh, Ronald. Oh, Ronald. Sorry. Ronald, sorry. Yeah. Uh, in terms of compatibility, well, you see, the interesting bit here is that Again, because it's open source, like I said, it, it offers you a uniform platform. On, so that, that already gives you the basis for, for, for compatibility. Mm -hmm. Those of you that have developed um, um, mobile apps, you know that once you master the way of developing a mobile, um, a mobile app for Android, it's the same way that that, that app is going to run on... Uh, no, rather on... Um, uh, Samsung phone or an HTC or a Huawei phone, if you develop an app that runs, and, and, and that's a power of open source, if I develop an app that runs on Android, then it, it's agnostic of any of the hardwares um, or the distribution of Android that has been used. Of course, all of these uh, proprietary phone makers have their own version of Android. But the important thing is if I develop my app to run on Android, it will run on any of those distributions uh, by those. 
But the other thing about uh, compatibility, really, in fact, the word is no longer compatibility in as much as it is interoperability. So we're no longer talking compatibility where my application should run on something developed by your Uganda, but we are talking about where my thing can interface or connect into something your Uganda has done if I want need to reuse a service they have. Let's assume your Uganda has a connection into BOU, for example, and I want to reuse that. I don't have to develop it. I just have to ask them for an API that fires a request to them. They will take that request on. So that for me is the level that we need to be talking about. Not compatibility, but interoperability. Yes, but interoperability, bringing them together in the closed loop. Now we're going into the closing remarks, taking each at 30 seconds, beginning with uh, John Baptist. Uh, thank you. So um, I think open source is here for us to, to consume with the, with, the right, with the right code and open source that you choose. You can uh, review it by yourself and uh, you can add features or remove some that you see are a risk to your, your, to your platform and deliver services very efficiently to the market. Thank you so much. Uh, Peter, would you please give us your take from the discussion and also your closing remarks. Okay. Um, as, uh, as, as you shared, I lead the team at Kanzu Code and we are very, very big evangelists mm -hmm. of open source. It's allowed us to piggyback and go miles ahead in a lot of things, but we, we are not just evangelists, we are also contributors. We contribute to Moja Loop, who are one of the first early adopters when already contributing mm -hmm to that ecosystem. Uh, we contribute to WordPress. We contribute also to Mifos, which is also a global platform for financial inclusion. So we are very sold out on this, and we are really, I would really encourage anyone, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, plug into these ecosystems, make use of this software, give back to it, and let's build systems that are changing our technology, not just locally, but globally, because of the work we are doing by giving back to these uh, open source solutions. Thank you so much. We cross to Innocent. Um, uh, to the players, uh, the stakeholders in, uh, in the bigger picture, financial inclusion, uh, time is for interoperability and nothing is going to take us any step back. Um, there is no more time for inventing things. We have to innovate. So uh, we should all be thinking of making what we have better and not creating new solutions. And uh, the easiest way, and I believe that is the only way to actually get the best success out of all this technology, is collaborating and, in a nutshell, thinking interoperability. Thank you so much. And uh, lastly, Ronald. I think let's be deliberate about open source. Let's have forums like these that speak about open source. Let's have a person or group of people like high people who are, who are uh, bringing the industry together, have a repository for some of these softwares. If someone wanted Moja Loop right now, where do they download it from? So let's be deliberate. Let's have a repository for that. Let's have forums or hackathons where people can add on to this software and come and brag about what they've added. Let us also make sure we have open source that speaks to the idiosyncrasies of the Ugandan setting. Let's stop adopting things from out there and trying to bring them here. Let's develop our own open source that does things. And let people pick it up. Let's create for them rails that then they pick up and, and reuse. For example, uh, rails for bill payments. That, that for me should be open source now. And people should pick that and, 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 and play around with it. And it's something we should also put in our education system. For me, I think we, we are all converted, but it's, we are siloed. Can this effort be unified and we have... Uh, a deliberate effort to push open source and perhaps people like Nita can help us uh, as they build their data center. Can they reserve space for a place where you, I don't have to even go to the internet. Locally I can access by connecting to their network, I can access uh, a whole set of different open source technologies that are all out there and reuse them. Thank so you. for me I think let's be deliberate about this, let's push it, let's foresee it in the industry and let's contribute. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone watching. We have been discussing how safe is open source software for financial services.